Number 1 I'm an 18-year-old male. I have an extremely large Alsatian dog, which needs to be walked about three times a day for an hour. I'm a large guy, and on the day of this encounter, I was wearing an extremely large, padded, black leather jacket with black, skinny jeans. My house is close to a large state park. I walk my dog there daily. I always take a secluded path off the main trail. There are two of these paths which run parallel to each other, about 20 meters apart. One path runs adjacent to a river, over which there's an abandoned house. The other path is higher up, and overlooks the one next to the river. This whole area is heavily wooded. I left my house, and started walking my dog at around 1pm. I take the main trail until reaching the secluded paths. I take the path closest to the river so that my dog can go swimming. As I get around one mile in, I hear people talking from up and around the corner of the pathway. I put my dog on a tight leash as I slowly walk up the hill and around this corner. As I look for the source of the noise, I see a lady in a pink blazer sitting on the ground, talking to another man who's also on the ground. As I approached, I realized that something was wrong. The woman was smiling. The man was sitting halfway down the hill, almost in the river, with his bike upturned next to him. It appeared to be some sort of accident. The path wasn't slippery, but it was steep and narrow. The drop at this section of the path was around 8 meters of sharp rock into a white river. That's when I hear the pink lady say, Someone's coming. The man grumbles something. I couldn't hear what. How do you know that? The lady replied. My dog started crying and walked just off the path to go and investigate. I pull him back. I ask the woman if everything's okay. She gives no response, just smiles at me and looks towards the older, balding man. We stare at each other for a second, and I get a better look at her before continuing to walk down the path. Let me describe this lady in even more detail. She wore a bright pink blazer with camouflage trousers and large hunting boots. She had to be at least in her late forties. If any of you have seen the Harry Potter films, just think of Dolores Umbridge and you'll have a good idea of what she looked like. After ten minutes, the path forks back, or ceases to continue. I decide to walk back, but this time not on the same path. I end up back at the main trail. I start to walk home, but I get a feeling in my gut that I should turn back. After all, that man could have been seriously injured, and the woman may have just been intimidated by my sudden presence or my grotesquely large dog. As I walk back down the path, I see this pink lady stop two young boys, no older than twelve, and say something about the man being stuck and needing their help. Instead of going down the path where the man was situated, I took the back path which overlooked the river. As I look down, I'm shocked. The man is moving his bike to a steeper part of the path, and then he lies down to look like he's injured. This lady was luring these boys to this obviously uninjured man who had just staged an accident. I tried to phone 101, the non-emergency number in my country, but I had no credit left. The pink lady had left by this point and was nowhere to be seen. I decide I have to loop back around and walk down that path. It takes me ten minutes to do so. As I get around there, the lady and man are arguing. Their conversation went something like, Now where are we meant to go? If you weren't such a spooky bitch, those boys would have come down. Hey, you were the one that said we couldn't tackle that big guy. At this moment, I go into a panic. I make my presence clear and approach them quickly. I have to get past them as quickly as I can. I pull my dog closer to me as I'm passing them on this narrow pathway, 
less than a meter in length. The man gives me the dirtiest of looks, while the lady gives me the toothiest yellow smile I have ever seen. I am not afraid to admit it. I was scared. I run as quick as I can out of those woods. When I do get out, I pass a member of the local government while walking past the parking lot and tell him what I had witnessed and heard. Fortunately, the boys the lady was talking to had already reported the suspicious activity. Apparently, the lady was claiming that her husband had fallen off the path and needed some help. The boys didn't fall for it. The government official had called the police as soon as the boys told him. I quickly left and won't be returning to that part of the woods for a good long while. So, creepy pink lady, if you ever hear this, I hope you got caught for whatever sick thing you were plotting. In a hopefully unrelated side note, a body was found in that area two years prior. If you'd like, I could write up about that incident as well. Keep me posted. Number 2 Someone knew where I put my spare key, and tried to break into my house tonight. Fortunately, the key doesn't work if the door is locked from the inside. Even though my family left for the weekend, whoever tried to break in definitely knew I was inside. I was up until 3am with all of the lights on. My dog, who slept in my room, didn't hear anything either. Or maybe I just didn't hear my dog. The weirdest thing is that I'm the only one in my family who uses the spare key, and I hide it in a very safe spot that can't be found accidentally. This person must have been stalking me. This is how I found the door this morning when I let my dog out. Number 3 My husband, Sun and I, moved into government housing seven years ago after being on the list for ten miserable years. We love our house. Since we moved in though, we've had someone messing with us. The first thing that happened was that our power kept being turned off a couple of times a night for a few months. Then. I had two distinctive pieces of clothing go missing. I'm a goth, pretty much my whole wardrobe is black. One of these items was a little grey and black striped t-shirt of an unusual shape, and the other, much harder to lose in an all black wardrobe, was a hand embroidered raspberry red dress. Two years they were gone. We came home one day, and they were laid out on our bed. In the meantime, a lot of strange stuff happened. For instance, someone took to eating KFC amongst some pot plants in our backyard. We'd find the remnants. Someone also took to leaving goth women's clothes around our washing line. The first time, it had been very windy outside, and we thought it might have blown in from our neighbor's side. No. My underwear started vanishing from our washing line too. Stuff would get moved around in our house. Things would go missing and then just reappear in super obvious, high traffic areas they couldn't have possibly been. In one case, placed smack dab in the middle of a table that had just been cleaned off entirely before we left home. The scariest was when they seemed to be focused on my medication. I have severe hypertension. I can't miss my meds. My meds would get taken and reappear in bizarre places they couldn't have gotten to naturally. This went on for four years. We would have changed the locks, but we'd been led to believe that this was a breach of our tenancy. This wasn't true, but we didn't find out until much later. Finally, we came home one day and found a bloody handprint on our bathroom wall. That was it. I was planning to call the next day and ask if the landlord could change the locks. However, the next day, without prompting, they rang us and said that they were going to change the locks that week. We hadn't mentioned any of the problems to them ever. 
thing settled down for nearly a year. Then, it started up again. Quietly at first, just stuff moving around like before. We started putting things up against access points at night, and it stopped as long as we remembered to do that. If we slacked off, it would happen again. Six months ago, weird shit started happening outside. One night, someone knocked on our door. I went to answer it. There was no one there. I thought nothing of it. I sat down, with my back to the wall nearest to the front door. Bang. A loud thump on the wall, right behind me, and then all along the front wall, like someone was hitting it as they ran away. I wasn't quick enough to catch them. A week or two later, I was turning off the TV when I heard a man coughing outside. Couldn't have been more than three feet from me. We're set back from the road, so it couldn't have been someone just passing by outside. Stuff starts getting moved in our house again. My two favourite skirts vanished. They turned up a couple of weeks later, neatly folded and hidden under things that hadn't been moved by us in nearly a year. The day before they reappeared, I went to use my phone and it auto-filled an address for mine that I'd never even heard of, let alone typed. It turned out to be a computer repair place a thousand kilometers away. The phone had never auto-filled an address for mine before. There's been a slow but persistent increase in activity. In May, I was sitting up late at night, and I heard what I thought was a man singing sad folk music from the direction of mine and my husband's bedroom. I kind of recognized the tune, but not quite. Then, I thought I was mishearing my husband snoring. I went to check, and the sound stopped. I thought it was just one of those things. The next day, we found out that the hot water system was turned off overnight. The switch is outside our house, near the head of our bed. Last week, my son and I were talking about the fact that there was clearly a pattern to all of this. Something would be hidden in a ridiculous place. My phone would get screwed with. Usually, I would open it up and find some strange internet page open. Three days ago, our son's shoes vanished. He's a 19-year-old with autism. He's super regulated and careful with his possessions. They're always placed in the same spots. It's a ritual he never varies from. I opened my phone, which went straight to Google Earth. The last thing the app was used for was to calculate a distance in Australia. Now, however, the app opened to a remote location in Turkey that I had never searched for. I keep a jar of crystallized ginger to deal with nausea. This morning, I came out to find a piece of ginger had been taken out of the jar and neatly placed on top. Two cups, both used, had been placed back in our cupboard. One had a shade of lipstick on it that is definitely not mine. I have no clue who's doing this, and as I said, I'm changing the locks again as soon as we can afford it. Number 4 I started living on my own for the first time in my life a year ago, in one of the more low-income parts of downtown Charleston. Since it's in the Deep South, and Charleston is a major up-and-coming area, there is a lot of gentrification going on. Places that were historically African-American neighborhoods becoming more upper-class and trendy chic. The homeless population and people of color being pushed farther out to the edges of the city. Typical stuff. As a liberal, white 20-year-old male, I didn't really care about living in a neighborhood that was known to be black and unsafe, quote-unquote. My mantra was that if my mind was on my own business, and if I was nice to people, they would at least leave me alone and be nice to me in return. For about eight months, I loved it. Made friends with the neighbors, etc. Pretty nice community. The only time I ever felt scared for my life was when I came home drunk one Tuesday night at around 3am. 
after drinking with some friends. I bike everywhere downtown, so I got to my house and proceeded to sling my bike over my shoulder and walk towards my upstairs apartment. That's when I saw a shadow across the street in my peripheral. There was absolutely no one on the streets at this hour, and it was dead quiet. I didn't think much about it, and just continued to walk up the stairs and unlock my door. I saw the shadow slowly cross the street to approach me. I heard the shadow say, Hey. Because I was still pretty drunk, and just wanted to get in the house at this point and sleep off the intoxication, I just said, Hey, back over my shoulder. All of a sudden, this white, bald guy walks up to me in a hospital gown with what I can only assume is blood on it. He smells like piss and feces, and stares at me with these wide, crazy eyes, pulls out this big-ass knife, points it at me, and says, I swear on my knife, I just want head from some black chick. I froze and said, What? I swear on my knife, man. I just want head from some black chick. With my big ass bike over my shoulder and still halfway up my stairs, I was in no position to fight back. So all I decided to say was, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, man but I don't appreciate you pointing that knife at me. He looks at me for a minute, looks at his knife, laughs, and stumbles away. I hightail it to the door, fumble with the lock, throw my bike inside and lock the door. I then decide to wait and listen to see if he was still outside. I grabbed my knife and went back outside onto my porch to see where the guy went off to. I didn't want him lurking around my doorstep after all. I looked around and listened for a good 10 to 15 minutes to see if he was still around, but the guy had just disappeared, like he never existed in the first place. It was dead quiet again, and I decided to go back inside. Can confirm, the crazies exist out there, and they scare the shit out of me. The best things happen in the dark.